Good wonderful morning ladies and gentlemen, we are here on the Leonidio Placa. Uh, it's beautiful, the sun came up, it's 8 o'clock roughly and I just had my morning bath in the pretty cold, pretty fresh ocean still. Still not quite warmed up yet here in Greece. Um, right behind me they are letting a new vessel into the sea, I think a new fisher boat or something like that. This tractor thing it's gonna pull it into the sea as they have done it with quite a couple of these boats before we've watched it pretty interesting how they do that uh, I thought I'd vlog today because I want to attack a, an 8b which is called Baum des Lebens in a sector of Leonidio that's called Nifada uh, really really nice sector um, right at the top of the valley at the end of the valley so should make for some interesting you know climbing and some interesting content i thought it vlog today because i want to share the the leonidio climbing experience a little bit with you right so we're making breakfast at the moment not for me i am i'm gonna stay fasted until i completed my first go so to say on the rocks and then i'm gonna uh, maybe go in with one banana or something like that so what we have here for mona for breakfast I think it's gonna be a piece of bacon and two uh, eggs and some bread and some some raw butter. We actually made the effort to to bring raw butter from from Austria. I think if you would know how, you could get raw goat's butter here somewhere. But uh, yeah, I couldn't find out where that place is. And yeah, then we're gonna attack the rocks. We gotta hurry up a little bit because Nifada gets in the sun at around three or something. I think that's always quite nice, you know, you start quite early in the morning, you get your session in very quickly, you're finished quickly and then you can go back to the sea and jump into the sea and have a nice evening, right? So that's the plan, <clears throat> let's see how we do. Wow, that looks like a nice breakfast. Are you happy with what you got? Yes. I wish I could help you but I have to fast because we have to climb so hard <laughs> today. <sighs> See if I can do it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop, Leonidio village for some grocery shopping. Calimera. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, a time for a little bit of climbing and for a little bit of commentary. As you can see, we are here in a pretty shady sector, the so-called Nifada sector of the Leonidio climbing area. It's a very high sector, it's very shady, it's northwest facing, I think, and the sun comes in at 3, at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And that makes it an ideal summer sector, uh, because you've got a lot of wind there usually, and you don't get a lot of sun, you've got quite high elevation, 
cool temperatures. In the winter, it's really hard to climb there, really tough because it's very cold and often the routes are also wet. But in the summer, it's quite good. And as you can see, the sector is characterized by lots of tufas and really, you know, shaky, tufa y pumpy, endurancey climbs. Up to 30, 35 meters even, stuff like that. Or is it actually that high? I don't know. It felt like that at least. Maybe it's also like something like 25 or something along these lines. Um, the route that we are attacking here at the moment is called Baum des Lebens, which would translate into English Tree of Life from German. Baum des Lebens is actually German. And it's an 8B, uh, quite a classic of the sector, I gotta say. Starts off with first pitch of 7A+, plus roughly, which is where I'm still um, working around here. I've sped that up a little bit because it's essentially a lot of shaking and kind of working with this one big tufa down here. Uh, as good as possible to lose as little energy as possible. The first pitch is called Baumkraxler, by the way, the 7A+, and that uh, translated into English would mean something like um, tree climber, or something like that. And it's, it really feels like this at times, because it feels, it feels like you're climbing onto a super big stem, you know, super big tree stem down there. Um, and now we're actually progressing into the 8B extension. Uh, here we get another quite okay resting position. Uh, as you can see, I'm gonna speed that resting position up as well because I'm shaking a couple of times there. The thing is with these two fi roots, as you know, uh, there's a couple of knee bars in there probably somewhere hidden. This is my second go. Uh, I just had one checkout go putting the draws on and you know checking the, the route out quite intensely and as detailed as I could possibly do it because I actually wanted to send this one in one day. This is kind of always my, you know, my, my go-to goal when it comes to 8B routes trying to send them in one day you know the with 8a plus this is something uh, I, I talked quite a lot about sending routes fast in previous videos recently and when it comes to sending routes fast for me 8a plus second go that's where i'm really happy and 8b in one day whether it's the third go or the fourth go usually i don't have really much more than four goes on a real 8b route but um, yeah, it could something like this could go down in, in one day actually if I really check out properly and execute properly. Um, this time, as you're gonna see in a second, it shouldn't happen because um, I made a mistake actually here regarding this clipping position here, which is why I have to um, uh, interrupt the attempt here and check this out more properly because I already knew that I wouldn't be able to stick the crux which would come shortly after this sequence there. So yeah, that's why I'm sitting down and checking it out out of the sitting. Uh, in this sequence I had the feeling that footholds are really really important and I just forgot two or three footholds. I mean it's really really hard if you have these two fire roots which you can, you know, the two fuzz you often can grab at multiple positions, right? So it's hard to remember sequences. And then on top of that, for the hand at least, and then on top of that, you actually also have to remember all the footholds on this one in particular. There's also theoretically, again, a lot of knee bars up there. I heard rumors of a Spanish guy who slapped some knee pads on and almost knee padded every single move of the route, right? Uh, I don't really like to do that because it just extends the ascent time to like double as much as it have to, has to be, you know, like if you climb the route in 10 minutes without knee bars, you're gonna take at least 20 or more minutes with knee bars because every knee bar is gonna give you the opportunity to shake out a little bit more, right? And uh, yeah, I usually don't like this kind of climbing style. I like to climb with as much flow as possible and as quickly as possible, kind of power endurancey or even bouldery stuff. Um, the endurancey thing is is good as well, you know, to to um, to remember sequences and if you try them more often, actually, these really nice endurancey routes as this one uh, kind of is one of these character, right? Uh, then you really get into the flow. 
but then you have to make four five six goals or something like that and yeah as i said i wanted to climb this one in one day which i didn't manage to do unfortunately um this was yeah after this attempt i didn't really have i had one more really good attempt where i fell at the actual crux and then it went downhill again from an energy point of view so i had to come back to tick this one off and uh yeah i should be able to provide you with the uncut descent very soon um i also because it contains quite a lot of technique and strategy this route want to do a uh, more detailed analysis of this route as i did with a couple of other routes in the past in the recent past but i'm gonna put this one on the patreon site as i've explained these videos don't get a lot of views usually um, but those who view them they really like them so this is an ideal characteristic for patreon only videos right so i'm gonna put this one the first content that i put on patreon only so if you want to check that out, head over and yeah, become a patron. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the quick Baum des Lebens Nifada attack 8B. Ah, would have been great to tick this one off in one day, I gotta be honest with you, but fitness is just not where it should be at the moment. Maybe I'm a little bit too heavy or some other stuff is going on, who knows. Anyway, we're gonna come back uh, for another session and then hopefully tick this one off. Now we are heading to the beach to make Mona a little bit happy, I think. And then we hopefully have the time to hit another hangboard session as well. Because we gotta get that finger strength back in. I mean, if you're only climbing endurance stuff like this for two weeks, your finger strength is basically gone, right? So that we want to prevent, Let's hit the finger shinder down there, but first to the beach and a little bit of carving up. High carb, low fat post-workout, <laughs> get some sugars back into the system so that we make it down to the beach mm -hmm. and then maybe for a good hangboard session. It's so vegan right now. <laughs> Schön Tag. Bisschen. Who's there? It's you again. Yeah, okay, so arrived at the home destination beach. There's no better hangboarding than beach hangboarding, I would say. We installed the setup as usual and we will train as usual. Also, the walls, one armors, assisted one armors without any tracking of numbers unfortunately because we don't have a scale or nothing along these lines it's just the chalk block in us we're gonna do a couple of reps and after that we're gonna have a nice dinner i think so first a few more warm-up games I also have a little uh, workout assistant here again. Just this stick here. We're gonna place into the finger shinder to make it a bit smaller, make it a bit worse. And we're gonna make, make our reps with this. Let's see if we can hang one handed already. Not so bad. Not so bad. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have our beloved dinner table. Lentil curry. Some meat and eggs. Greek salad. Tzatziki. Kefeta. One more time, please. Ne, ne. No miso oti ine sa ine nostimo. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, my friends. This is gonna be amazingly tasty. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Hopefully with the uncut descent of this freaking bomb this Lebens 8B. Man. Uh, Alright. Bye. <laughs>Good morning, beautiful people. Have you ever had doubt at times that the Earth is a sphere, that the Earth is a globe? We live in funny times, right? So today's a very special day. I got up super early in the morning, which is basically now. I don't know the exact time now, but I guess it's about five or something in the morning, maybe six. Uh, we're right before sunset here. Uh, ah, we're right before sunrise, pardon me at the Leonidio Placa, Placa in Greece. Now we're at the right end of the Placa, which you can see here with this blue hotel here. Uh, when I film down there, you can see the Placa in its whole length. And when we let the view go by myself, we can see here the strip of, um, of land going down. Right behind there, this, that's where the sun is gonna rise. These, these, these islands there, I mean it's actually, it's actually not an island, in between those two, in between those two islands there, there's another tip coming up, which is already pretty far away, so we can check this out here. It's perfectly visible, everything. And then we're gonna cruise over on the horizon. And now we're bumping into something here. This is the tip of an island whose name I don't know now, whose name I forgot, unfortunately. Here is the tip of another uh, piece of land that's coming from the Peloponnesos. And we have to know, I mean, we are at sea level here, right? As you can see, we're at sea level. Here you can see this piece of land which is coming from the, the other side of the Leonidio Placa. And this island down there actually looks completely different. If you just travel up a bit, if you get a bit of elevation, um, which you can do here in Leonidio because it's a very steep coast and you just have to ride up with your car a couple of serpentines. Then this island fully reveals itself, which is now a bit hidden behind the horizon. And we can actually already dis dis uh, discover some of the island if we just walk up here a bit on the placa. This is how huge the effect actually is. So let's try that out. So that's me again, but it can be sure we don't have any cuts here. Let's just walk up the placa and then take a look at this island again. Yeah, we live in funny times, man. In these times, with so much information and disinformation out there, you really have to find out stuff yourself, you know? And that means you have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, which is yeah, unfortunate. But what are you gonna do? You gotta do what you gotta, what you gotta do, right? So now we're stepping onto this onto this piece of concrete here. But as you can see, now we've got maybe something like 10 meters of elevation or something, maybe five, 10 meters. Ah, it's not 10 meters, it's at max five meters, right? So we, are, we walked up the beach here and then got up onto this ledge. So let's try and find the island again. Oh, 
Look at that, it looks already a bit bigger. Can you see that? I'm filming this in 4K, so you get a bit more zoom than even I can see here. And then I'm gonna try to compare these two pictures. I'm trying to hold up the camera as much as possible here. So now we for sure have 5 meters of elevation. Maybe even more. And this is how big, you know, this is just because this island is just exactly as far away as it needs to be to show this effect, right? So that's pretty amazing actually. By the way, on the left, got a beautiful sunrise coming up there. Nice. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so we're standing pretty much at the exact same spot as before, only now it's two hours later, as you can see the sun is already pretty high up in the sky here. There we go, it's 8 o'clock in the morning roughly, before it was around 6 o'clock in the morning. And we're again at sea level at Leonidio Placa, Placa on the uh, Peloponnesos. And I'm gonna try to move the camera now, we're gonna see if we can find the island first of all. There it is, beautifully. I don't know about you, but I think the lighting conditions got even a bit better. What I'm gonna try now is I'm gonna move the camera so close, as close to the sea as possible, as possible without wetting it, okay? So, um, yeah, we're now at about 1 meter and 70 centimeters above sea level, I would say. That's how tall I am, maybe 180. And now we're gonna move closer closer to the sea here so that's pretty impressive whoa okay let's be careful that we don't wet it here but that's pretty incredible the island is still visible you can see here we're really really freaking close right so now we're maybe 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters above sea level and we can see, still see this. So I'm already pretty excited to see what the earth curvature calculator says about this. But anyway. So much for now. Let's uncover this island a little bit by walking back. As you can see there is this tower there for the the dude, you know, the beach master, to see, to have the overview of his his little uh, bathing guest, so to say. And we're gonna utilize this tower now to, um, to gain a bit of elevation to uncover this island. So follow me. I think we're at the, when we are at the top of this tower and I'm gonna hold the camera up. We should be at least at around Oh man, it's kind of hard to climb up here one-handed. We should be at the least uh, at seven, eight meters of elevation or something, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, folks, there we are. Let's see if we can find the island again. So here's the roof of this thing, right? Get that. We're filming this in 4K here right now, right? So you should be able to see a bit more land now than before. There is a tip of the island to the right of it, which um, extends, so to say, it's only very, very few meters above the horizon. I hope I can zoom it in um, in 4K because we can be here without losing resolution. That's what's going on, right? We're gaining elevation, we're uncovering bit by bit this island. Man, I'm really grateful for this opportunity, to be honest. Because I'm not sure if there's actually a lot of, a lot of possibilities to even film this effect out there, right? So this island is just at the right distance from the Leonidio Placa. I still don't know the name of it. I still don't know its exact distance. I don't have internet at the moment, but I'm gonna look it up later. Uh, all I know is that I'm uncovering it as I am 
gaining more and more, uh, more elevation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the northern end of the village on the road towards the uh, plateau, so to say, which is at the northern end of the village. And as we can see, we're already quite a, few, a bit higher than last time than on the, on the beach. Let's check it out. There we are. And as you can see, we are perfectly in line there with the right end of the beach. And when we zoom in, got our beautiful island right there and now we can see it in full shape and the funny thing is if you look close to the horizon there is this kind of a dust belt or a steam belt rather I should call it because now it's a bit later in the day already I think it's around two three o'clock or something and the Sun had quite a bit of time to heat up the ocean to make this dust appear and this takes away the um, the lower end of the of the the island so to say but you can almost imagine now the full shape of the island here so we're definitely almost as high as we have to be to see the full island there and we're gonna take a few more turns to be up higher and it should reveal itself then completely as we are having a steeper angle of view then so we're not as influenced by the dust belt anymore and we should see the full island let's check it out All right, now we're right in between the third and the fourth turn on this road towards the northern plateau of Leonidio. As you can see, we've got the village here in front of us beautifully, quite a bit higher than we were before. Also a little bit further away than we were before, I think. I'm gonna try to show it on the map. And let's zoom in here. Down there we've got a beautiful island. So I think this case is closed. As you can see, this is the full shape of the island, what we've seen from the beach, which is, by the way, we're standing exactly in line with the right end of the beach now, which is where I viewed this island in the morning. So there it is, uh, the full shape of the island. As you can see, we've seen only the tip of the island from the beach, which is kind of demonstrating curvature, right? I don't know how to explain this on a flat earth. What we see here is that the surface of the ocean seems to have some sort of curvature. Um, all right, I think we're gonna head back to the beach now and take a look at this from the beach again. And I am uh, so bold to predict now that we won't even see the island from the beach uh, at this time of the day anymore because there's gonna be so much steam in the air that we can't see it because of the optical horizon, right? Like the flat earthers always so correctly say, there is an optical and a physical horizon. And now I think the optical horizon is closer to us than the physical because there's gonna be so much steam in the air. So let's see if that's correct. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are completing our journey here on the Placa of Leonidio. I still got some ice cream on my nose because they make some really good ice cream in Leonidio, I tell you this much. And it's very windy, so I hope you can even hear me. Let's see if we can still see the island. And actually, yes, we can. I can see it with my eyes. I'm not sure if the camera is able to pick it up, but we're gonna try anyway. So there we are, back at Placa, back at where we started. Let's zoom in. There it is, I'm trying to put it into the middle of the screen there, really far away. I hope you can see the tiny little bump above the horizon. As you can see, it's very hard to distinguish from the sky, from the ocean. And now I'm gonna try to walk as we did last time. I'm gonna try to walk towards the water level. Yeah. And then we're gonna see if we can make it disappear. Because as we should get closer to, to the water level, the dust and steam layer should be even harder to penetrate. Uh, to be penetrated by the light, you know? So there we are. Super big wind, a lot of waves today. And let's try again. Oh, 
But as you can see, now it's very, very hard. The wind's below the horizon even a bit more now. And this is what the flat earthers call the optical horizon, right? It's got so much stuff in the atmosphere that we cannot see behind it anymore. So now that we're so close, optical horizon becomes relevant but as we have seen behind beyond the optical horizon there is the physical horizon good day ladies and gentlemen it's about seven o'clock in the morning we are again at the beautiful right end of leonidio placa as you can see here sun just came up it's a beautiful sunrise and let's see if we can find our island again down there it should be I can see it very clearly with my eyes. I'm not sure if the camera is able to pick it up. I turned the settings up to 10-bit in, instead of 8-bit so that the camera has a chance to pick up the very slight bump which is pretty much a bit to the right of this boat which just cruised, cruised out there. There it is. I'm gonna try to zoom it in with digitally as well. And since I've been watching this island now for one and a half months pretty much because we're living on the beach for one and a half months now um, I thought I just want to say a few words uh, about refraction because refraction is a topic that often comes up with the flat earth round earth debate um, people are trying to blame refraction for all kinds of observations right so the thing is if refraction was let me just sit down here a bit because it's much, much more convenient. Ugh. So if refraction was to falsify these observations <clears throat> time and time again, then we would observe different results at, at different refraction, refractive conditions, right? So if I would watch the, uh, the, the island on one day where there's a lot of clouds, a lot, of, a lot less refraction because not so many temperature layers in the air, because the sun can't go through and heat up the atmosphere, then the island would look differently than on another day where the sun comes up at the same daytime at least and there are different refractive conditions right one day we should see the whole island for some reason even on a round earth because uh, the the light gets bent so much on other days we should see nothing because the light doesn't get get bent and the island actually disappears behind the physical horizon at least that would be on a round earth now the flat earthers come in can come in and say just the opposite stuff about their theory you know to to try to uh, explain their observations with their theory now the thing is, if refraction was a thing, we should, in a longer time frame, always see different shapes of this island, right? Because at some day, again, as I said, the refractive conditions are, other, are others than on other days, right? <clears throat> now the thing is, as I'm watching this island for one and a half months now, if I can see it, it always looks the same. It always is the same. The same little bump above the horizon. It's always the same size depending on where I'm standing on the beach, right? Up here with about 5 meters of viewing height. Down there with about 1 meter 50 of viewing height. It's always the same. Down there is a bit smaller obviously than up here as we discovered in the first few recordings. So either that for me I can only conclude that either refraction is not a thing at all with the light in, in a distance of 60 kilometers in the atmosphere like this or refraction is always the same and therefore doesn't really falsify our observations right what i can say though and what i want to mention is that there is a significant scattering a significant phenomenon of scattering that is that there are so many dust particles and steam particles in the atmosphere coming up from the sea probably as the day progresses when the sun shines on it that so much light gets scattered out of their way that it can't reach us anymore and at some point the island just disappears it doesn't disappear really it's still there but the light just can't come through and this is what we call the optical horizon and this is also what, what the flat, flat earthers call the optical horizon right rightfully so because it is just an optical horizon in this in these conditions when scattering becomes a thing 
the optical horizon comes closer and actually uh, veils the physical horizon which is behind it right so these are the mechanisms we're dealing with here if refraction was a thing the island should always look a bit different which it doesn't it always looks the same if we can see it and if we can't see it at all then scattering is a thing so again we had a shot nowadays now with um, with 10 bit 4k again to make the island visible because it's very hard to view it today I can see it pretty clearly with my eyes but the camera has a hard time picking up these tiny these tiny differences in uh, light intensity obviously um, it looks always the same it looks the same as usual tiny bump above the horizon right so that's what I have to say about scattering and refraction let me know down below what you think and thanks for viewing this experiment it was fun to make it I think you're gonna help you cross the road, buddy. Hmm? Big dude, big dude. <laughs>